Welcome to the Scariest Things Podcast, <laughs> episode 15, where we turn you on to the tropes and trends of the horror genre and act as your gateway to all things horror. Tonight, we are talking hillbillies in the woods. Ding, 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 ding. Might be a little crazy. Little crazy. They might be a little crazy. You know, when I was researching hillbillies in the woods, I came across... Such great titles as Legend of the Hillbilly Butcher, <laughs> Backwoods Bloodbath, and Hillbillies in a Haunted House, the 1967 classic. I also came across a little film I am ashamed, absolutely ashamed to admit I have not seen. I have not seen Wrong Turn. I have uh -oh. not seen Wrong Turn 1, 2, 3, 4, uh -oh. 5, 6, 7, uh -oh. or 8. I haven't either. Oh, man. <laughs> I didn't know they had that many. I think, I don't know. I, th I don't know if there's 8, but there's a lot of Wrong Turns. Yeah, I, I, wrong, wrong Turn was when, I have to admit, I had to do a bit of research for Hillbilly Horror. Billy Horror. It's like, yep, seen that one. <laughs> I've seen that one. I, I think... Don't want to see that yeah. one. So, yeah, I, I don't think... Don't need to see Legend of the Hillbilly Butcher. <laughs> Sorry, there is probably sorry, Legend of the Hillbilly <laughs> Butcher. I'm sure you made you turned out a very fine movie. <laughs> it, I, I I would I think it's fair to say mm -hmm. that there is no subgenre within the uh, the horror <laughs> umbrella <laughs> that is more depraved than hillbilly horror. This is true. Uh, it's home to some of the it most is, nasty, it is de depraviest. It, 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 it can't get more depravier. <laughs> more depravier than that, buddy. <laughs> go get some boot chat and, and, and go slaughter some local women. Uh, yeah, some of the na most nasty, vile films ever put to celluloid. Yeah. Mean, oh yeah. Most no of these being films. Question. There. Most of these movies don't get out of the mud they, they're mm -hmm. just they are they are most of them are terrible yeah uh and most of them are really hard to watch i i, I know that but, there's but there is an incredibly incredibly rich mm -hmm. rich tradition i think mm -hmm. probably dating you know all the way back i don't know if this is the progenitor of all mm -hmm. this but you know you go all the way back to like the grapes of wrath you mm -hmm. know and sort of this like it's sort of the foundation is sort of economic disparity. What will people do in the worst situations? Mm -hmm. Will they choose to breed with each other? And so you have inbred mutations. <laughs> will they choose to kill each other? Will they choose to eat each other? Yep. What will they, what yep. will, what will yep. backwoods economic instability mm -hmm. do to someone? <laughs> it's really kind of what we're talking about. It's the overalls. It is the, yes, it's it the, is. Something about the overalls. It could be the overalls. It could be the moonshine. It could be the lack of teeth. Yeah, so... It uh, could be too many teeth. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> An extra finger or two. Uh, so, you know, I think the, 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 this, you know, the, the fear of poor rural white folk. Yes. <laughs> Uh, you know, you got a lot of. This is the home to the last house on the left. The hills have eyes. House of a thousand corpses. I spit on your grave. Everything Rob Zombie's ever done. Yeah, this is, <laughs> they all live in this nasty corner of the genre, and I think that you know sometimes when you you stumble across the the, the the real hardcore fans of this genre, and you you must think that there's a little bit of their souls missing to love it this much. Um, I, yeah, I think so. Because I think because I, so. I, I think, think it's, these, it's, it's the ultimate desensitization of the psyche. Yeah, because the, <laughs> hillbilly, some, horror, hillbilly horror, hillbilly uh, horror, you, you've featured, you, you done us wrong, hillbilly horror. <laughs> <laughs> you've done us wrong. <laughs> Torture and rape, and cannibalism. Come on, hillbilly horror. Standards. You've done us wrong. <laughs> so what, what do you? I mean, what? what Paul, what, Paul, what, going to get going to wrestle up some of some of them, <laughs> them locals, some what, so college kids. What do you what do you think is it? I mean, what, what's the, what's the element of hillbilly horror that, that gets you? I mean, if you were if you were to say like what, what like what what resonates with you? What what, what terrifies you? What what scares well, you about hillbillies? Okay, the hillbilly horror. No, okay. Do you think it's is it sort of the like they are sort of operating not only sort of outside of the law, they're operating outside of like all social norms, and so it's kind of an anything goes. Deal. Okay, so so here's I mean. All right, not to put too fine a point on it, but yes. I'm an urban Asian American. <laughs> I am a college-educated 
um, <laughs> Uber nerd, uh, and uh, I, I actually has a, a healthy fear of hillbillies. Yes, well, you know, and, and I think it's some of that got brought on. I I know that um, I went on a trip out to Eastern Oregon, mm-hmm. um, and my my dad, who's a is a field researcher out, mm-hmm. he does a lot of work in, out there, and he knew there was a woman who I was dating at the time, uh, Donna. You met, mm-hmm. you, yeah, yeah, you met Donna. Um, we were driving out to uh, John Day, yeah, and and I got stopped by not a exact, cop. not exactly yeah. Alabama, no, but it is <laughs> it is very it's cowboy country, sure. Um, and I got pulled over for you know I got, the cop was I was doing like twenty miles an hour in a you know school crossing. It's like it's Labor Day, right? Oh right, okay. I can't, it's like there's no school crossing, right? But at the same time, I was like you know the the, the fear of like. You city, you I'd like, to, I'd like to ask you some questions. And you know, my father, he, he was so, like, so he's he, like, you're going out there with a white girl. It's like, uh, yeah. I mean, it's like all the people I know are white, so it's not like what, 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 does, what does that that doesn't have to do with anything. But he's like, well, you know, there's some people out there who don't look upon things. It's like, Dad, come on, give them some credit. And then all of a sudden, I start you. But but those are the kinds of. Little small prejudice fears yeah. that I that Dad, come from, on, from it's 1962. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Be cool. <laughs> so that there's there's for for the urbanite and for you, the for you the, don't have to be in Alabama, right? It turns out no to no. to fear. I, I, I actually Billy's. I was you know I've I've, I've, I've driven through the South. Mm-hmm. Uh, I found it lovely. I was in. I, Vicksburg, Mississippi, and rode the bus with the locals, and they had yes. a good old time talking to us. Yeah, um, but uh, no. these are not these are not those those good good natured uh, southern southern gentlemen. No. from 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 Oxford, uh, Mississippi. <laughs> these <laughs> we're talking about uh, inbred uh, mutant. Some cases hill hillbilly. Right. Hillbilly. Yeah. No, there is a. Ri- I think there. I think there is a rich cultural tradition. In the United States, it's it's sort of um, you know it almost looks on people that are poor, downtrodden, you know, liver, living in impoverished situations. It's almost like you know, it's almost like a zoological experiment. You're looking mm-hmm. at you know people that are and and I think you know that it's it's like whether it's whether it's comedy whether it's literature whether it's it's always sort of you're looking down on mm-hmm. making fun of poking fun at you know this class of people and I think the interesting thing with hillbilly horror is that it sort of turns all that on its head and it's like if you want to look down on me that's fine yeah. but I will have the ultimate revenge and that ultimate revenge is not going to be something that your urban sensibilities are going to have the capacity, or, the mental capacity to understand or deal or with. Or your general moral compass. <laughs> it's going to get ugly. <laughs> uh, and and for the record, we might have been able to list deliverance uh, on this, which yes. is um, certainly it's horrifying. Uh, we, did not, we, did, Beatty. we did not cover horror, non-horror on the... Uh, or, or we did not cover deliverance. Sorry, as a horror, mm-hmm. not horror, on our horror, not horror. We're gonna. Have, we're gonna I guarantee we'll be back with that that kind of episode again yes. because something about deliverance, like what separates deliverance from like hostile or right. something like that, right. where you where you've got so essentially we, backwoods terrorists. Yeah. So we got to do we got to do uh, deliverance and night of the night of the lepus. Those are those are going to be episodes are all, giant, all unto their se- all unto themselves. <laughs> One full hour of Night of the Lepus and giant uh, mutant uh, cannibalistic uh, bunny rabbits are not hillbillies. <laughs> just to be clear, but they are people dressed up in bunny suits. That's the, that's the best. They part. are. They are. All right. So what do you got for your number four on your hillbilly horror fearsome foursome list? Well, Where should we start? I, okay, so I'm going to start with. Um, uh, a we're starting in the bayou. All right, I uh, like it. Hatchet, two thousand six. Oh yes, uh, the tale of Victor Crowley. Now this, not to be confused with Alistair Crowley. Uh, no, um, although I bet yeah. there's maybe a little bit yeah, of my, homage kind of, to the famed uh, Satanist. I, um, I think that the name climber. was cherry picked. <laughs> yes, to be honest, just a wee bit. Uh, but uh, so Victor Crowley's a bayou boogeyman who. 
um, was a deformed child, mm-hmm. and the local uh, Bayou kids mm-hmm. um, uh, set Victor's house on fire mm. because mm. you know mm. crazy crazy misshapen kid. Yep. Yeah, you got to go light him on fire. That's that's what that's what kids in the Bayou do apparently. Boo Radley. <laughs> and uh, did Harper Lee teach you nothing? Scout, <laughs> don't go light those other kids on fire. Um, that so a, that was a very good Gregory Peck. Yeah, you got a boss of <laughs> Scout. Uh, so Victor's dad tries to rescue his son, charges into the in, into the fire, tries to chop the door down to save his son, but his, don, his son is right beside behind the door, takes an axe to the face, and is killed. Yes. Right, uh, but he and it turns out his killed, son is like killed. a four hundred. Pounds, six foot eight. Yep. So the linebacker. The, so he is he is Kane Hodder, <laughs> yes. also known as Jason Voorhees from yes. the Friday the Thirteenth series. That's right. This is it's got Tony Todd in it. Yeah. This movie it's got uh, uh, it's got Freddy Krueger, uh, Robert Englund yep. is in it uh, briefly. Little little cameo. So it's we're gonna it, talk Robert Englund a little later. Really? In, in oh, all, yeah. He'll be he'll, he'll, he'll oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna um, throw you some curveballs tonight. Right. Okay. Um, so you know I think one of the things that the the prosthetics on Victor Crowley are absolutely hysterical looking um, because they they make his head about as wide as his shoulders. It's he's because he took the hat to the face. His head sort of slumped and became sort of this Jabba the Hutt <laughs> kind of pile of head that's sitting on his shoulders. It looks like a sh- it looks like a decomposing <laughs> pumpkin. Yeah, it looks uh, like if you go to the pumpkin patch too late in the year. Yeah. You will see yeah. Victor Crowley. So anyway, so these, he, he's this monstrous, misshaped killing machine. Uh, story is really simple. It's a bunch of tourists who go to New Orleans mm-hmm. looking for the authentic Bayou experience. And go. Uh, they hire an inexperienced tour guide uh, that sends them into Crowley's swampy stomping grounds. And pretty much all he does around his uh, house is kill people. Uh, and Why with a hatchet. You? If you had a pumpkin head, you would kill people yeah. too. So it's he's he's got some emotions that he's got to sort out with yeah. the, with the hatchet, um, and he does that over and over and over again, and he pretty much kills everybody in the entire tour group. Roll credits. <laughs> that's, 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 that's what you get. Uh, so, and he continues yeah, to sort out his emotions, emotions in, over and over and over again. Uh, hatchet two and so hatchet three. And this is, <laughs> actually, the, the the latest one, Victor Crowley, is a lot of fun. Yeah. I have to admit, I just saw that recently. Is uh, that number, what What number would that be? Four. Number right? four. Okay. Um, Go to the scariestthings.com podcast look website up. and you will see uh, a review of Victor Crowley. It is, um, these are really, really bloody movies. Um, and actually, the this originally received an NC-17 rating. Um, but it's but they, video, so no one cares. Yeah, and so <laughs> the, the, they, they sort of appealed it. It got brought down a little bit to rate an R. But it is still. This is a nasty '80s style grindhouse movie. Um, in my in my book, this is this is high water mark mm-hmm. for for slashers. It is because it's 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 the humor in it is better than than the Nightmare on Elm Street, which has Ooh, some, which is that's saying a lot. Which has you know it's a lot of quips and funny things, but the the humor I think in this one it's I think it's more situational. Sure, um, and and the humor is coming from. The protagonists and not the villain. Where right. like with yeah. with Fred, the Nightmare on Elm Street, all the humor is coming from, from Freddy. Freddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, it is it's so over the top. The the dismemberments, just the raw carnage that that Crowley uh, goes through. It's not it's not in the slightest real uh, looking. Not like something like a Serbian tale or Hostel or right, right, or some right, of those right. real mean spirited ones. This is not a gateway movie. No, this is a very bloody hillbilly. Gore fest, but it's one of the best hillbilly it's horror movies. It's fun. Yes, yeah. it's, it's 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 a step above stupid. Not too high a step above stupid, but yeah. it's fun. Yep. All right. Go Mr. see. Mr. 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 Crowley. Crowley. All right. Um, even though I got done with this long diatribe about uh, the rich cultural tradition of <laughs> hillbillies in America, here we go. My first movie <laughs> is not American at all. It is the two thousand four psychological horror film from France hmm. known as Calvere, also known as, I, I know, I'm, I didn't take French in high school, <laughs> also known as The Ordeal, um, 
This has a great trailer. It has haunting, super haunting piano music and lots of evil pigs. Uh, it basically, it's a great, this is such an interesting film and it is so dark and it's kind of dark in, in ways that I don't think Americans even really fully understand how to do dark because it's got some deliverance elements. It's got some Texas Chainsaw elements. It's got, it, it draws from a lot of different places, but it eventually involves this guy who's kind of a, he's kind of a, you know, a, a guitarist performer who is, you know, traveling through France and Belgium and along in the countryside. His, his touring van breaks down. He gets taken in by this other sort of fellow performer, Mr. Bartel. Bartel claims to be, you know, a, a retired comedian. He brings him into his house. Um, lo and behold, you know, Bartel starts to go, go through um, Mark. Mark is the performer. He starts to go through all Mark's stuff. He finds some, like, pornographic photos that Mark had been carrying around. He finds his cell phone. He finds some of his, his other stuff. Uh, Mark confronts him about this, and Bartel like lights his van on fire. Hmm. Um, Bartel then starts to turn very aggressive. Bartel starts to turn very strange. Bartel talks at length about his his former wife, um, and then Mark finds himself tied to a chair. Uh, in an old sundress <laughs> and Bartel is talking about um, Mark as if it was his former adulterous wife, Gloria. He's convinced that that Gloria, his former adulterous wife, has come back in the form of Mark. Um, so this is, this is sort of a French hillbilly version of Misery. It's kind of a French hillbilly visit version of Misery, although um, Mark it, Mark ends, ends up escaping. He gets caught in a rabbit trap. He then gets taken back, uh, or, or Bartel eventually catches up with him. They take him to the local pub, of, and it, the local pub is full of these sort of backwoods Belgian kind of hillbillies who it's largely all men who are dancing with each other. There's a rape involving Mark. There's oh. people having sex with pigs. Oh, oh no. Uh, oh, no. Okay. This uh, is hillbilly <laughs> horror. <laughs> um, but then Bartel basically has everybody in the bar convinced that Mark is indeed his former wife his adulterous wife, Gloria. Um, it, it's, it's super dark. I will tell you, if you're if you're terrified of seeing this movie, Mark does eventually. He does eventually escape in tears <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much shattered. Uh, he does escape uh, the hillbillies. I won't tell you exactly how he escapes the hillbillies, but he eventually does, and he you know, wanders out into the woods and, um, the interesting thing is that he escapes, but that he is alone by himself out in the woods. Um, it's it is it is subtitled, uh, so you gotta you gotta get through the, the French subtitles, which aren't that bad because there's not there's not a ton of dialogue, which is not. No, do they, not do they, what, how do you say "squeal like a piggy" in French? <laughs> <laughs> Le pig. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it, it's, I, I think I, if I recall correctly, I saw the trailer on the, I, when iTunes first got into the whole trailer biz and then, mm -hmm. and then iTunes became the place for trailers. I think that's when I first saw it. Mm -hmm. And I just remember being really taken by mm -hmm. the trailer and being really taken by the music. Cause it's, it's just this really discordant, discordant, um, uh, piano music that's, that's really darkly so no banjos really, really, they don't no, have banjos no, 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 ban no they, they have pianos uh, really disturbing stuff um, but great film great film how do you say it again? I think it's Cal Calver okay Calver C-A-L-V-A-I-R-E Calver yeah that sounds right okay I'll Calver. give you that yeah C. Calver 2004 French hillbilly horror not American hillbilly 
horror. Okay. All right, so what do you got for your number three? Number three. Um, so this is a subversion of the trope. Yeah. Um, this, Ooh. Uh, like this is it's a trope. it's a horror comedy. Um, I I found that I think I like my hillbilly horror as horror comedy. Yeah. Um, I think Hatchet had some humor to it, mm-hmm. as bloody and as nasty as it was. It was mm-hmm. still kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Um, this one is straight up funny. This is Tucker and Dale versus Evil, mm-hmm. uh, and it's features uh, Tyler Levine and. Uh, Alan Tudyk, uh, brother of my friend Sam. Hey, Sam, if you're listening. How what you up? Um, and uh, Katrina Bowden. So this is uh, this is a situation where Tucker and Dale, and and uh, Tucker is is Tudyk, and um, Dale is Labine. Um, mm-hmm. That they're uh, these guys look like crazed evil hillbillies, but they're not. They're actually really sweet guys. Um, and they get beset upon by a bunch of slick college kids in uh-huh. in polo shirts <laughs> who uh, they they encounter them in a uh, in in the in the, in the uh, prototype corner store getting groceries and they really engage in, in earnest well meaning right. conversation right. and 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 truth truth be told Tucker and Dale are as afraid of the college kids as the college kids are afraid of Tucker and Dale and but there's there's some but so it, yeah, it really does. It really does yeah. turn the whole genre yeah. on its head for sure. And, for and sure. Dale can't help himself, but he falls in love with uh, the lovely Allison, who's uh, played by Katrina Bowden. Um, and you know, he tries to make small talk, and 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 Tucker tells tells Dale, "Listen, you just you, when you when you talk to him, just just smile and laugh, and and and, and, and let them let them see your positive side." And so he shows up with like a scythe. And he walks up to the group of, of these college kids, and he just starts inanely la- giggling and laughing, carrying a scythe. Not <laughs> not the best first impression that he can make. And uh, you know, I think that heart is heart is in the right place. heart is in the right place. And so not they, in the wrong place. And then they realize maybe that didn't go so well. Let's go retreat to our vacation home, aka a cabin in the woods, <laughs> right? And. And then, the, of course, the college kids come stumbling in on the, ca- the, the, the the cabin in the woods, and there's some there's lots of these awkward awkward interactions, and one of them is sort of this kind of peeping tom moment where Tucker and Dale are paddling out in the uh, out on the lake, and they see Allison changing her clothes, and then they and they couldn't they start giggling, and she notices and she slips and she hits her head on a rock, right. and then they so they they take her back to the house to to uh, to to tend to her injuries. And the rest of the kids think that she's been abducted, right? Right, and and so then there's a series of violent pratfalls where they they, they attempt to Incredi- rescue. Yes, and ultimately Tucker and Dale kill no one, no one. But there's these, these but everyone is kills themselves. <laughs> like, everyone is dead. Like what? Look out! Not at the hands of the hillbillies. No, it's like it's like don't get close to that wood chipper. <laughs> and and you know, and of course, what happens is that they try to pull the guy out of the wood chipper. And and then the cops show up and they're holding both ends of the guy's legs. It's um, it is a uh, it's a fun fun twist on on, on exa- turning turning the uh, the hillbilly story on its head. Mm-hmm. Um, and it the 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 whole it plays on the mistaken assumptions and the prejudices and the and and the you know the, these pratfalls. They they continue to build on the suspicions and and you know I think. You know what I? You know what I think about Tucker and Dale uh, mm-hmm. versus Evil. I think Tucker and Dale versus Evil deserves a second film. I think it's the mm-hmm. kind of thing that you, with a little bit of creative writing, you could keep mm-hmm. this story going because the characters are so likable yeah. and so funny right. and so well-meaning. Right. I think you could easily spin this off into like a ghost genre, yeah. a zombie genre, a UFO, like anything. You could take any of the different horror genres and place yeah. Tucker and Dale in, in, in that genre. Right. And, and the, there's sort of the uh, uh, in Hamlet the, yes. the two the, the, the two characters. Al- Alas, poor Yorick. No, yes. no, 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 no. Um, well, uh, Rosencrantz, Rosencrantz and, Gil- and Gildenstern. Gildenstern. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they are. Thank they are you, AP Junior English. <laughs> Mrs. Bagley, I'm so sorry that I couldn't remember that. Rosencrantz and Gildenstern. <laughs> right. Um, 
So yeah. this was uh, they you know, are so, they are a little yeah they are they, yeah they're like that. Um, they're, they're, Although so the the the, 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 the C three PO R two D two kind of a thing that they yeah. are yeah. kind of the bystanders watching all this stuff happen around them, bemused right. by everything that 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 occurs. That they are. Although they're a little bit more central to the story, but things that dramatically happen around them where these kids go around, they impale themselves on stuff in, in these horrible Although, ways. you know, whereas Hamlet did not deserve a uh, sequel, uh, Tucker and Dale does. <laughs> so hats off to actually Eli Craig, who's the director, yeah. uh, went on to do his next film, Zombieland. Oh. So he's, uh, if he continues to produce, uh, he did, he did a, a, a take on The Omen called Little Evil. Yeah. Not as good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that he's found that, that this is going to be his niche. He's going to do um, horror comedies, and I'd love to see him use these two guys again in some other. Like yeah. maybe, maybe it's not hillbillies, but they'll do, you know, in the same way that Edgar Wright uses uh, Simon Pegg right. and Nick Frost. Exactly, exactly. So that's my number uh, three. What's your number? Uh, did you do your number three? My number three yeah. is, uh, if I was to say uh, phobia or hydrophobia or I eat your skin, what would you say? You would say... 1970, I Drink Your, your blood. blood. Okay. This is a cult horror film, cult, cult. Uh, it involves a small town overrun by rabies <coughs> infected members of a satanic hippie cult after a revenge plot goes wrong. It's got hippies, it's got <laughs> Satanism, it's got hillbillies, it's got rabies, it's got. Zombie infected rabies LSD hippie. It's got it's got the whole it's got so all the works. Last in our last all episode we talked about um, when when the MPAA actually opened the doors to R rated movies. So this this film nineteen seventy this was right after they opened the floodgates. Yeah, so it originally received an X rating, mm. but they cut it up a little bit. They squeezed it into a. A double bill with I Eat Your Skin, and then the MPA said, oh, all right, uh, you know, you guys have, uh, even though we still have, you know... I think the funny thing is, okay, the so... Manson, the Manson family lurking in the corner, we'll give it an R. So, so We'll give it an R. The funny thing is, if you think about R-rated movies... Yes. Okay, so a movie like this... Yes. I would you ever take, life. would you ever take Ernie... Like yes. as a as a parental <laughs> as a, as a parent, 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 parental to see art to, to, to no to see. he needs to find this out on his own <laughs> that's right, that is see. his own personal he, he, rite of passage he has to sneak into the theater yes, to, go to find see to see I drink your blood so uh, basically you know as I mentioned it's uh, it's a sort of uh, it's a group of hippies that are conducting this sort of um, satanic ritual as a part of this Manson like cult. Uh, that is unknowingly witnessed by one of the local girls in this rural community. Well, ultimately, sadly, the young girl is is dragged in front of the group and raped by the hippie Satanist biker cadre of LSD fueled miscreants. And um, <laughs> learning of the assault, uh, one of the one of the other locals. Um, uh, Dr. Banner, he confronts the cult, uh, but they assault him and they make him take LSD. And um, ultimately, um, the, um, the, uh, the story starts to get a little convoluted, but basically what happens is one of the local proprietors is a bakery and they make meat pies. Well, they take the LSD and the rabies and they mix them together and they inject them into the meat pies and they give the LSD rabies <laughs> meat pies <laughs> to the hippie Satanists. How did how did this not become a hit? <laughs> I know! I know! It sounds horrible. I know! Um, ultimately, ultimately, um, the uh, the 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 uh, the hippies all start to succumb to the rabies like <laughs> like, like the, the hippie satanists who are on LSD are not crazy enough they need rabies thrown on top of that mix so no, no so this is yes. not this is not sort of your overalls wearing variant of these these are these are these well, are backwoods is, yeah this is sort of the the local community railing against, against. this outside force right. that's come in 
yeah. to them. So it's almost kind of a it's kind of a take on the whole Tucker Dale thing, right. where so it's like a, it's like the outside or the 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 community, those, the rural community reacting those to crazy the outsiders. kids from California and their, yes. and their rabid yeah. LSD vampiric ways. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, there's some. There are a whole lot of grindhouse video nasty terrifying grody gross out uh vivid technicolor blood soaked scenes in this film i drink your blood is it i mean it really is i mean you know i think it, whether it's the grindhouse the sort of the cult i mean it's it's up there it's up at the top of the cult classic and Ugh. i think it's got enough of the <laughs> i think it's got enough of the hillbilly element to warrant its inclusion in Hillbilly Horror, 1970, okay. I Drink Your Blood. All right. Yeah. So my number two. Yes. Um, it takes all kinds of critters <laughs> to make Farmer Vincent's fritters. <laughs> I'm talking about 1980s Motel Hell. Yes. yes. Uh, I like my Hillbilly Horror kind of silly. Yeah. And uh, welcome this to Motel Hello. And the ode kind of zorches out a little bit, so it's like it's Motel Hell. Uh, so uh, Farmer Vincent mixes up his special blend of smoked meats. Um, better off that you don't know what's in the blend. Um, so uh, Rory Calhoun and Nancy Parsons play uh, a brother and sister farming duo in an unnamed southern state. So this is this is your prototypical. Uh, you know the the although, hillbilly. Although when you watch um, it, it's clear it's filmed in some back lot in, in California. San Fernando Valley. Yeah, in San Fernando yeah. Valley. <laughs> this is like clearly California, right. not uh, a like, southeastern. No, state. there's nothing this swampy is, about this. Is this. California, for sure. Um, but uh, but because of the way they talk with bad bad southern accents, right? Uh, you know that they're from the south, right? Yeah. Um, so they have a um, uh, a motel attached to their farm. And uh, there they capture unwary uh, motel guests and plant them up to their necks in the fields, plumping them up to make their famous meat fritters. Um, however, one one uh, moment, Vincent uh, ends up falling in love with one of his uh, would-be victims who they captured while she, this, this woman, Terry, mm -hmm. uh, and her uh, boyfriend, Bo, were driving, riding around on their motorcycle. He shoots out one of the tires, and uh, they both get knocked out. He goes over there and plants Bo in the backyard, mm -hmm. captures Terry, and falls in love with her. But his his brother is also the sheriff, and <laughs> he also falls in love with Terry. So there's a funny love triangle between the captive Terry, right, uh, Farmer Vincent, and Vincent's brother, the sheriff, uh, Bruce. And uh, there's... It's just it's 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 just the, sort of this wacky, nonsensical kind of uh, uh, where they're they're harvesting the meats, meats yes, and, of the and peoples. Eventually, the, the, I think the, the most ridiculous part is that Terry create, sort of falls for this to whole create the culinary people meats, <laughs> and, and it's like it and and one one day Vincent wants to show Terry how he smokes the meats and. Uh, <laughs> And and then he, he he can't help it, but he proposes, and then and so that they're going to make a so they're going to make a big feast out of it, and so they start ten you know they, they start forcing more food down these poor <laughs> these poor people who get they so throughout the film they're they're finding different ways to capture these poor poor victims, and the and the and and the sheriff is completely oblivious to the fact that there would be people crying for help. It's like there's somebody chasing me, and there's, there's a car. It's like on the CB, right? This is the, this is you know 1980, so they still had CBs, right? It's like I'm being chased. That's Citizen Band Radio uh, and Katie Eights, Hugs and Kisses, Breaker Breaker, Smoke, <laughs> Smoke in my trail. Um, they, you know, so there's there's a bunch. They, they capture a bunch of uh, a bunch more people, including a rock band. And, and, oh, that's right. And they, that's right. I forgot about the rock band. So they they stuff them in the they, they stuff all these those, these folks in the back in the backyard and eventually and they're buried neck deep neck deep with their with their with their vocal cord slit so they can only kind of hiss you're right um and you know i think it it just it gets totally bizarro the at the very end of the movie bruce finally because he becomes angry because he he fall he he doesn't get terry so he's not going to let his brother do it and then he finds the the bodies out in the back 
and then he has to confront his brother and they have a chainsaw duel <laughs> while Vincent is wearing the head of a pig, uh, which is highly disturbing. Um, and then, you know, so that, that they, they, they duel with the chainsaws. At the end, there's, there's some absolutely stellar horror movie lines, some of the best lines in horror movies. One of them is, Meat's meat, and man's got to eat. And one is, <laughs> and, and, one, and, and then Vincent, in a more, and so the same man who just said, meat's meat, and man's got to eat, also says, sometimes I wonder about the karmic implications of these actions. And then the last, his dying breath is, I'm the biggest hypocrite of them all. My meats, I use preservatives. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, was, you know what's great about Motel Hall is like, all you need to know about this movie can be seen in the movie poster. The old, the old timey one sheet. Like if you look at the one sheet, yep. it captures the entire farmer, farm, film. farmer Vincent with a pig head, yeah. with a chainsaw, and a bunch of people planted up in their necks. It's got it all. Yeah, Motel Hell is it is it's great. It's wackadoodle. It is yeah. Motel Hell is great. You should def- everyone should see Motel Hell at all least right. once. That's my number two. Uh, my number two is a film called, also in close, close in the same same time frame, mm-hmm. nineteen seventy nine, Tourist Trap. Oh, uh, this this is a film that had Chuck Connors in it. Chuck Connors of is he the Rifleman? Uh, the no, that's no, that's Chuck Person. Yeah, uh, but uh, Chuck Connors did lots of sort of action adventure cowboy type films from the fifties, sixties, seventies. I mean, he was kind of that uh, that that strapping, strong jawed uh, sort of westerner. Anyway, he in this case he plays a character by the name of Mister Slauson, and this isn't a super complicated film. It's basically the as because it is kind of what we had talked about earlier the sort of economic uh, depression or economic anxiety that's brought on by different cha- different you know societal changes. In this case, it was nothing more complicated than you know the state highway deciding to reroute away from mr slauson's museum where he the stores tourist the tourist trap where he stores mannequins and it has a fascination with <laughs> dolls and <laughs> like, mannequins hmm. which is crazy S- creepy strangely lifelike mannequins maybe strangely lifelike mannequins strangely life mannequins um, you know, this didn't make my did, uh, tourist trap didn't make my list for the, the the scariest moments of all time. But there is a great there's a great great scene in the film where you know he picks up um, you know one of the women and um, he uh, and and helps her because uh, because her car had broken down and um, he invites her into the house uh, to see. Um, to see the uh, to see the mannequins, but then he you know returns back and he has one of the mannequin heads on, and then he takes the mannequin mask off, and it's him, and it's 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 pretty terrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, the the film is is great because it really it does draw on it it really does draw on a lot of the elements of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm-hmm. Um, although in this case, it's just it's really just Mr. Slauson, the Chuck Connors character, and and, and, and his sort of like need for you know his he's he's obviously lonely. He obviously needs sort of you know communal interaction. He obviously needs you know to 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 be working with dealing with human beings on a regular basis. But in lieu of that, he surrounds himself in this desolate in, in this desolate. A rural community with mannequins and dolls. Um, great, great film. Um, it 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 eventually ends with you know you you realize much like Calvert, uh, it it deals with sort of the loss of a loved one. Uh, Mr. Slauson is dealing with the loss of a of a of a uh, 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 his wife. That'll break a man. That'll break a man, yeah. So he's dealing with the loss of his wife, and and um, he um, he at the end of the film, he's he's sort of dancing with one of the mannequins, and and the 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 protagonist uh, sees that he's dancing with what she thinks is a mannequin, but she's not so sure. <laughs> 
and she eventually kills Slauson, the mannequin, the mannequin loving psychopath from so the woods. Was it was it actually a, was it truly a mannequin or was it a corpse? Well, I think I think that was the yeah. It was I think it was a corpse. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So it's it's a good film though. It's got a lot of it's got a lot. Sounds of more great, melancholy. Oh, it's a little melancholy, but you know when they 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 do these scenes where they kind of you know what's interesting with 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 Chuck Connors because he's really he really is not the typical actor that you would place in either really a horror film or certainly not a psychological horror film. Mm -hmm. And I think he does a really good job. Of, of capturing kind of the psychosis of, you know, a killer. And there's these great scenes in the film where you're sort of seeing it through his eyes where all the mannequins are, you know, kind of moving and talking and there's the sounds and you can kind of, you get a sense for, you know, the level of psychosis that he's mm -hmm. dealing with in, in his head. Hmm. So, yeah, yeah tourist it, trap. Sounds like, you know, I, I, when, you're, when you're talking about that, it reminds me, uh, there's a scene from Blade Runner, uh -huh. where there's like all the mannequins and, and, and the pris. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, where right. she's the, the replicant sitting right. amongst, amongst a bunch of dolls and that kind right, of thing. Right, right, right. Has that, yeah. I don't know, that just something just struck me. I haven't seen yeah. it, so I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm imprinting. Yeah, so I think we can easily yeah. say Blade Runner totally ripped off 1979's <laughs> Tourist Trap. Even though they came, yeah, it came out a couple years from yeah, yeah, so yeah, totally. Yeah. That's a, Blade Runner. Ridley Scott. Rip off. Got you pegged, buddy. <laughs> We're coming for you. So, um, hack number one. Um, <laughs> yes. So what do you num got? number one. I mean, it has to. Was it, it hard? Was no. it a hard choice? Was it an easy choice? It's it, it, it it's a kind of a must choice. A must choice. Well, uh, we've had some of those. Yeah. And 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 this is more out of respect than enjoyment, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, and when you said hillbilly horror, <laughs> you this is you cried. Yeah. You, you uh, cringed. You shook. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh yes, it, I, we're going to get to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's not a, we we don't have an overlap here, but we're going to yeah. get to this. So this is um, I don't love the film, right? What? I, 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 what? Uh, but I you know I recognize that how important it is. And, oh my and, god, and it's not it's not the most important. Yeah. So this is I think that there are I think we've talked about this before. Yeah. There are certain movies that you can say before and after. What are the oh yeah? What are the what are the movies that made? That, that, that really made a difference. I think, you know, we said Night of the Living Dead. I think you can say Jaws. I think yeah. you can say, uh, you know, Evil Dead, Alien, yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of them. It is, yeah. it, it really, it, Although, it, it sort of, it, it, here, it, here's what I, w here's what I will say. This is my, the, the big caveat to that, to that list is that really before Texas Chainsaw, there was absolutely nothing at all like that with yeah. a lot of those films like even with jaws you could you could draw parallels to a lot of the different monster movies even with yeah. evil dead yeah. you could draw parallels to a lot of the yeah. ghost haunted house type yeah. films there is nothing like this before right. this was and a it, true original this one i mean it took me a long time to get around to this one yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. because it had such the implications to this movie, it just, it, oh, it's, yeah. out, it's just so as, savage. As um, dark as dark gets. And, you know, the, this is, in honesty, it's not as gross as, say, Hatchet. It's not, it's not as, um, um, it doesn't have as much just raw bloodshed mm -hmm. as you would expect for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Right. At, at, you know, but the, the whole thought of this deranged, psychopathic family of cannibals that would prey upon people who stumble into them. It is, um, it's horribly nightmarish. And, oh, yeah. and then the idea that somebody would come up and not stab you with like Anthony Perkins style with a knife, right? but in, in, in just something that's horribly disfiguring like a chainsaw, uh, and the, just the raw fear. There's of, no escape in a chainsaw. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you can't parry that bastard. It's right, just, it's, right. it's uh, that, that is a, uh, not to mention, you know, the sound. Yeah. The sound. Right. That. Well, no, 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 not that, but the like the the musical score sound uh, that. Yeah. 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 But the set, but I, for me, you know, the sound of the, when when he comes when Leatherface oh. comes busting out the chainsaw. Mm -hmm. It is games on. <laughs> but the the lead up to that is really profound yeah. too. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I saw uh, a couple years ago they did the 40th anniversary re-release, and they like 
you know, they cleaned up the original copy and they even mm-hmm. like they even put out a thirty five millimeter print yeah. and it was all this and that and, there was a, the, and I thought to myself, Oh my god, I'm gonna go into this film and it's gonna look like it's gonna be like clean and shiny and bright and it's gonna take all the dirt and grit off of the original and it's gonna look super hokey. It didn't. Yeah. Because it's so scary to begin with, it didn't matter how much they cleaned it up, it was st- Still so dark right. and still so gritty. But there was, I think that you, we were talking about this before that they, they lost a good chunk of that footage and they were ended up stuck with bad film. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so that there was, so that even if they went back to the original, restored the original, the right uh, celluloid, it was, it was bad film. Yeah, the, the, physically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, 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 it had been, it had been out in the sun too long, or something had, had messed with it, and it. Mm-hmm. And so it was burned that that some of that kind of burned in look mm-hmm. that really helped kind of the ethos of, of how that thing played out. Uh, this thing's I, it, y- you will be hard pressed to find a more powerful film than the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, I'm going to tell you what it is. All right, so the that's more, the more powerful film, not a crossover, not the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It is a Toby Hooper film, film just a few years later called. Death Trap, Horror Hotel, Starlight Slaughter, but most famously known as Eaten Alive. Okay. <laughs> this is the 1977 film. Uh, in England, it was released as Death Trap. Um, it was one of the films that was prosecuted in England as being one of the video nasties. Uh, a lot of the social critics in the United Kingdom uh, you know, called for a total and complete uh, ban of this film, um, and in fact, a lot of the the versions that you could you could receive in the in the UK were chopped down significantly. Interestingly, this film, of course, is Toby Hooper, but it also stars, which I, I told you we would get back to. Robert, Robert England. England. Robert England is in this film. Yeah, so it's basically a so it was many years before uh, his his spin in in uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, yes, yeah. so and this is 1977. Um, it essentially involves a uh, prostitute who makes her way to the decrepit and rundown Starlight Hotel in the middle of rural Texas, and she the the prostitute who apparently couldn't make it in the big city. Decides to go to rural Texas because that's what you know prostitutes do, uh, <laughs> and she uh, goes to the Starlight Hotel. The proprietor is a character by the name of Judd, played by the Neville Brand, and he is clearly out of his mind, insane, crazy, has tons of sexual. Frustrations. Some of them repressed, some of them not. But ultimately, everyone that goes to the hotel meets their end because adjacent, directly adjacent to the hotel, um, is a giant sort of swampy pool pit that houses his pet alligator. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean this is really kind of the I mean Texas Chainsaw is is the ultimate. No 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 question about it. But this is this is a, a very close second and it features just a lot of great elements. The thing that's funny about this movie when you watch it, the first time I watched it I was struck by something and I couldn't figure out what that something was, but I realized it's like shot on this soundstage, the whole friggin' thing. So it's basically this, like, almost like a one-act play mm-hmm. in this hotel, in this teeny tiny hotel that's got a pool right next to it with this giant alligator in it. And everybody that keeps wandering into the hotel mm-hmm. ultimately meets their end by getting getting the heave-ho and getting tossed into the alligator pit. So does he, is he a cannibal himself, or does he just feed the alligator to the people that come in? Uh, he, no, he just feeds the alligator. Okay. Crocodile. Okay. Crocodile. Not alligator. Right. Crocodile. Because alligators are more somehow he Somehow yeah. he moved the crocodile from Africa to rural Texas. I, I'm not sure how that happened. But, yeah. Uh, Eaten Alive is a, is, a very, is a very, very solid film. Um, you know, as I say, it was just done a couple years after. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea what Toby Hooper's... 
um, thinking was as he made it, other than, you know, Texas Chainsaw was clearly successful. They did it on a shoestring. This was obviously done on a shoestring. Um, a one, know, yeah, one act play or a one, one act, or, or or one one act play like in yeah. a single soundstage. And the fact that the Academy of Motion Pictures could not failed, <laughs> failed miserably, could not recognize one of the greatest well, directors the, of all time. The irony is that they had uh, in their We Love Movie segment, yes, they had Leatherface swinging his chainsaw around. I know. And it was like, and so you figured. It's like, all right, oh, that's right. Yeah, somebody, Toby. Somebody must have put some, two and two together. Well, that was, you know, so but they, no, they didn't. They missed. They missed Adam West. They missed Toby Hooper. They missed. They missed, there was a, there was an actress who won an Oscar. Yes, and they forgot her. I, of course, I forgot who myself. But yes, but 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 you know, I next, saw next, I, year, seen, next year's Oscar segment is going to be called "We Hate the Oscars." <laughs> <laughs> shame, shame on you, Oscars. Recognize Toby Hooper or be damned for eternity. Okay. All right, let's get to our let's get to our dead undead list okay. quickly because we're running out of time. Oh, mm-hmm. so what do you got for your undead? What is the film that people should walk away from? That's either within the horror with, within the hillbilly horror yeah. genre. Or this not? this is adjacent. Okay, um, this is behind in the, in the neighborhood. Yeah, this is quasi hillbilly, or mm-hmm. it's uh, you know it's a slasher movie. Sure. Um, but it's a it's a riff on a slasher on on slasher movies. This is behind the mask, the rise of Leslie Vernon. Oh yeah, um, I saw this in a lot of hillbilly horror lists. Yes, people have this. Yeah, and so the, and and it's I think it's hillbilly ish because he's a uh, Leslie Vernon is a serial killer, right? Um, and there's a film crew who's fascinated with him and has learned of, of his his exploits, which are legendary rumors, mm-hmm. and that they are trying to follow him around to get to learn his tricks of the trade. He has. Um, Reportedly, kind of been not. He's been laying low. hasn't been hasn't been making a lot of killings lately, and and so they they, they go. They, they talk to him about what what motivates him, and you know this is one of those things where you realize that at some point he's going to turn on the crew. Right. It's, it just has to happen. Um, but again, and we talked a little bit about Leslie Vernon. I think in the context of our Killers episode, right. yeah, and, and uh, episode number ten. Fact of the matter is, we've got we've got enough 11. things under our belt now that I, we're having a hard time remembering how what what numbers they were. So that's that a good thing. Is the sign of pure success. Um, but uh, you know, I, I another appearance from Robert England. Mm-hmm. Um, Wow, he's all over the place. Uh, yeah, and, a, and an appearance from uh, the Walking Dead's Scott Wilson, who yep. played Herschel. Oh, right, 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 um, right. Who plays the mentor? And and it, and the I think serial one of the, ca- that's right. One, one, of, the, one, mentor, of, yeah. one of the things that, that they make in this movie is that they make the the role of a serial killer so normal, right? Where they have they sit around, and they say, "Oh, you remember that time?" Right, and uh, so they 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 have fond memories of their favorite kills. And the film crew just eats it up, yeah. um, and then they, and then eventually they get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they get their comeuppance for following Leslie Vernon around. Um, highly enjoyable, shot in Portland. Um, got a soft spot for that one. It's it's kind I, of underseen. Um, I like Leslie Vernon. The only thing is, you really do have to suspend a lot of disbelief um, because it almost takes on kind of fantastical quality in the casualness of. Yeah. The serial killer or, or, perspective, in that you you know you expect the serial killer to be completely deranged, and unhinged, and not being you know capable of stringing together a sentence, and so you really do have to suspend a mm-hmm. lot, a lot, a lot of disbelief to 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 engage in this film. Yeah, yeah. All right, my undead, uh, the film that you should go out and see, and continuing on in the the utmost respect for Toby Hooper is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Two. Oh, okay. A very good film. Uh, this this film had Dennis Hopper. It had uh, Bill Mosley, uh, and it basically involves a uh, Texas uh, radio show host who is ultimately victimized, terrorized, and captured by Leatherface and his cannibalistic homies. <laughs> while this Texas sheriff is on hot on the trail of, or thinks he's hot on the trail of. Mm-hmm. The family, the Texas Chainsaw right. family, who didn't die, as right. we all know, <laughs> they did not die after the first film. I mean, they create the impression like, that something suggestion, happens. This suggestion. I mean, just watch the the trailer. Well, I don't know if it's a trailer 
Uh, it's a trailer it for, might, for the second movie. For the second movie, it might be a TV spot because uh, of the way it's shot. I'm guessing it's a TV spot. It's it's so in a world. It's it's so well crafted because it's basically you see this close up shot of a chainsaw blade, and in some instead of somebody dripping with an oil can dripping oil on the chainsaw it's blade, blood. it's a it's an oil can where they're dripping blood onto the chainsaw. Perfect. And and great. It's it's a great film. Um, you know, um, one of the things Toby Hooper really wanted to do is that um, he was super interested interested in kind of mixing you know positives and negatives and and kind of black comedy and gore and kind of mixing them all up in together and you know he allegedly um, it wasn't that he was dissatisfied in Texas Chainsaw the original but saw that there was really a lot of comedic type elements to Texas Chainsaw, mm-hmm. in and that's what well Dennis Hopper brought some of that yeah. kind of zaniness. Yeah, to it. and so he really wanted to to suss out some of those things. There really wasn't much humor at all in front in, 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 in the original the, the, no, the no, Texas no. Chainsaw Massacre. No, other than you know it's it's hillbillies, which well, is yeah. which is kind of fun on its face, kind of funny. It's and absurd. So, yeah, and so he really wanted to suss out some yeah. of those things, and he really did. And he played up he played up sort of the. The hysterical uh, kind of uh, kind of oddball elements of the family in the second film, where you didn't you got a lot of that, but it, it kind of came across in a more comedic way yeah. in, in number two. It's interesting, actually, how the, the you'll see the 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 second time times around in some of these movies, you get they take the edge off, make it funny. Right, Evil Dead to Evil Dead Two does the same right. thing. Yeah, that's true. Good point. So. Good point. Uh, all right, so what do you got for your dead? What okay, is film, so what my film to stay away from. So this is um, staying on the uh, notion of sequels. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I've got uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Three in three D. Come on, man! No, it's in three D, dude. This movie, this it's, it is three D. It ceased being scary. That that everything got too familiar. This was this was okay. Let me ask you the most like, elemental question. Yeah. Have you ever seen it in 3D? I did. Okay. I did. And, okay. and it's like, so there's like, I, I still remember the kid with the ping pong. Thing, right, right. And then the eyeball that gets thrust out through a spear. Eyeball so is great. But it is, I, no, I think part of the problem is this is, this the, is when. The, the tractor fight thing at the end in the barn it, is. At this, like, at this point, the, it, it, Friday the, the 13th service. turned into a geek show. Right. At this point, it was like, okay, we're going to see, it was like more, more sort of over the top stuff. Um, but. Um, it, the, the the humor never hits in right. this. It, um, it's you know the, 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 the if you are looking for your prototypical character uh, horror character development in the nineteen eighties, this this does hit all the right elements. You've got your stoner. You've got your geek. You've yeah. got your no, princess. Yeah, yeah. You've got your slut. No, you've the, got your jock. You got it all. Right, and and they all get chopped up. And they all get chopped and up. And most Everyone of them, most of them I think they they they, they used uh, a pitch for the to, slightly sane girl who <laughs> the, the the last girl might have a dark past. Yeah. Just maybe has a dark. So this one, this one was you realize that they kind of run and low on ideas. Yeah. Uh, the although my my redeeming quality for this. Yeah. Um, 3D. No. Aww. This was the move. This was the movie where Jason gets his hockey mask. Oh right. Yeah. Because the first one he's not in it. Really. Right. And the second one he wears a pillowcase over his head. You right. gotta forget that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then so this he is where he get gets the hockey mask. Yeah. And then and then that becomes his his calling card. Yeah. Um, not worth. I, I I think this. This to me started was it was emblematic for sequelitis. Yes. Okay. What's your dead, dead. movie? My dad. Um, this doesn't need any introduction. Your your on your number one was Texas Chainsaw Massacre. On mine is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm talking the night the 2003 remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh. It, it was almost like they did. It was kind of like they did Psycho. You know, it was mm-hmm. like where where where. Um, you know Vince Vaughn and uh, uh, famed Portland director uh, went about and remade Psycho. They did almost like a shot-for-shot remake, and people Gus went, Van Sant. Gus Van Sant, and then people went, "What? Why did you do a shot-for-shot remake? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense." It was kind of like they didn't do obviously quite a shot-for-shot remake. They just took the original film and they just kind of made it unnecessarily darker. 
and kind of like more gritty. Um, and in fact, Roger Ebert gave it a zero out of four. He called it a contemptible film, vile, ugly, and brutal. There is not a shred of reason to see it. And those who defend it will have to dance through mental hoops of their own devising, defining <laughs> its meanness and despair as style or vision or commentary on our world. And this, Which, is, this is a man who actually really enjoyed Last House on the Left. That's good. So yeah. he, uh, Roger Ebert knew knew and loved his sleazy movies. Right. And so that's saying something. Right. It's, yeah. He's not, he's not just planning like, it for being violent or vile. Right. Because he likes some violent and vile movies. It's just that this one's pointless. Right. I, I, will, I will admit... I am not for remakes because uh, I think once you do something, there's no reason to there's no reason to touch oh, it. Although the, Un- unless you unless unless it's a complete failure or unless you sort of reimagine it in a yeah. really interesting way. But m- nine times out of ten, I say don't remake it. You, it's already been done. It's fine. This is clearly a case where remake was absolutely yeah. unnecessary and they brought nothing new to the table to foreshadow what yes. will inevitably. W- uh, I've I've had. Uh, uh, the remakes. Some friends, friends, friends who Fearsome are asking me that they, remakes. they say, "What's your favorite remake?" Fearsome Force Fearsome and remakes. remakes, and it's like they said, "Best for worst for remakes," and Done. That, that that is easy enough to do. It's coming, people. Yeah, because uh, there because there are some good ones. I have some of my all time favorites. My number one, yes. is a remake. Yes, I mean we talked about a remake in in the last episode mm-hmm. for um, um, the birds. No. God damn it. <laughs> um, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, Donald Sutherland's yeah, 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 that's remake right. of the 1955 well, movie. Well, we also, well, we talked, about the, we, we talked about the failed remake of The Birds. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and then there was a, I think there was also a, a, a failed third attempt to try and refresh Invasion of the Body Snatchers. just called Body Snatchers. That didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Uh, the first two are classics. The third one is completely mm-hmm. forgettable. Piranha 3. Double D. Yeah, it's, triple D. That's, that's perfectly respectable. D. Just seeing, you know, <laughs> the, 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 the... We will get to, we will get to a remakes episode. We so will get to a remake, the, remakes I, episode. We don't long. worry. Don't worry. But since we're covering Hillbilly Horror tonight, <laughs> our advice to you is don't buy a one-way ticket to rural Texas because that's where things always go wrong. You ain't coming back. <laughs>